Sometimes the things you see in the shadows are more than just shadows. My mom was only 23 when she had me, and looked even younger. One Black Friday, she was getting some new work clothes. A couple went up to her at one point and told her what a cute baby I was. She thanked them and walked away. A while later, she realized that the couple had been following us. She wasn't sure if it was a coincidence or not, so she went to the food court, which was right next to the security desk. The couple came up to her again and told her that, while she was brave for being a teenaged mother, she shouldn't waste her youth being saddled with a child. They pledged to do a better job raising me than she could, and offered to give her $5,000 for me. My mom was furious. She was a single mother, yes, but by choice. She broke off her engagement to my biological father a few months after she found out she was pregnant, since he didn't want to deal with a child right after graduating from college. So she moved back to her hometown, where my grandma babysat me while my mom was at work. She had a very well-paying job at one of Michigan's many Ford plants as well. She pointed out that she wasn't a teenaged mother, and that she'd call security if they didn't leave us alone. They tried to grab me from my stroller. My mom screamed as loudly as she could. Three security officers came running from different directions, and the couple bolted, leaving me behind. My mom explained the situation to the officers, and two of them took off after the couple, while the third walked us to our car to make sure nothing else happened to us. The next day, my mom got a call from the police letting her know that the couple had been arrested after trying to take someone else's baby. They were charged with multiple counts of attempted kidnapping. Apparently, the wife was infertile, and the couple didn't want to deal with adopting a child, so they had been following around young blonde women with babies and hoped that the baby would end up blonde as well. As the husband and wife were both blonde. I have always had an innate fear of the night. Not so much the dark, but the night itself. As a child, my imagination was overcome with stories of creatures that come alive at night. I never had anything to base this fear on, until a night when I decided to go with a buddy of mine to a baseball game and got stuck at a red light at 2 a.m. after dropping him off. Everything was fine, until I stopped at a red light right before the street that led to my house. It was a T-junction, and I was turning left. I would have just run the light, seeing as there was no one there and it was 2 a.m. on a school night, but earlier that week I had heard the phrase, Character is what you do when no one is looking. And for whatever reason, that was the night I decided to prove to myself that I was a man of character. I obeyed the red light, feeling good about myself, bordering on self-righteousness. When I happened to look to my left, and noticed a lady sitting all alone on a bus bench. We made brief eye contact, and I quickly looked away. It was too late, though. I could see movement out of my peripheral vision, and knew she was coming my way. I also noticed she was carrying a bag. I quickly checked that my doors were locked, my windows were up, then moved my right foot above the accelerator just in case, and braced myself for what was to come. I was hoping it would just be an awkward exchange, and was praying for a quick light change before she reached me, so I could just speed out of there. She walked right up to my window, put down her bag, and began to tap on my window. I nervously looked up at her, and she motioned for me to roll my window down. 
I had automatic windows, so I just imagined pushing too hard on the window button and that thing just coming all the way down. So I took a deep breath and lightly flicked it with my finger. The window moved microscopically down, but she didn't seem to notice or care. She then leaned in and began to talk. My boyfriend beat me up. I have a friend who lives down the street. Can you give me a ride? The woman was very skinny and looked like she had either lived a hard 20 years on the streets or she was in her 60s. She just looked beat up by life, not just by a boyfriend. There was something about her delivery, though. It was robotic and seemed rehearsed. That made my skin crawl, so I told her that I had to get home and could not give her a ride. My boyfriend beat me up. I have a friend who lives down the street. Can you give me a ride? This time I felt more confident when I declined. At this point, the light changed, so I slowly lifted my foot off the brake and started slowly rolling forward while muttering an apology. Not moving, she just looked at the light, then looked down at me, leaned in closer, and said five words that have haunted me ever since. You made the right decision. She then picked up her bag and walked back towards the bench. I'm a 22-year-old woman who just moved to a small town in Virginia with my dad in October of 2015. We were having problems with a leaky shower in the bathroom adjacent to mine. You know, typical new house problems. Of course, we called a plumber, who arrived at around 8 the next morning while I was getting ready for work in my own non-dysfunctional bathroom. My dad let him in then apparently went down the street to gas up his car and then go to work, leaving the plumber and I alone in the house. My bathroom consists of just a toilet and vanity, with a door leading into the shared shower room that connects to my dad's bathroom. So while I was getting ready, there was only a door between the plumber and I. I guess he figured out that I was in the house due to my hair dryer. Next thing I know, my bedroom door is opening and there's a toothless behemoth of a man in the room, like Wario and Waluigi combined into one big plumbing mess. He locked my door behind him, then walked five feet towards me, stopping in front of my bathroom door. I froze, all while he was staring at me for the longest thirty seconds of my life. Breaking his stare, he cracked a wide, toothless grin and starts molesting with his eyes, gazing up and down my body like he was sexually sizing me up. Just then, I heard the front door open. The plumber twirled around on one foot like a basketball player, unlocked my door, and walked out. My dad ran in, asking if that guy had really just been in there. After silently nodding, my dad ran after him, but the freak had driven off at this point. Oh, and he left without fixing our shower. My dad immediately called the plumbing company and tried to explain what happened to the manager, who proceeded to tell my dad it was our fault the man entered my room because I didn't lock it. The asshole did end up sending another plumber to fix the shower. Afterward, my dad told me that he had only returned to the house because he had forgotten his wallet.